Matt fans, with temperatures set to rise across Europe, I thought I'd take the opportunity to have a look at the European heatwave, fires and GIS. We'll take a look at a couple of online GIS tools to help assess risk. And in the second part of the video, if you're not too familiar with GIS, we'll have a look at how you can do some basic GIS tasks. The first tool we're going to look at is Copernicus Emergency Management Service. You can just Google that, but I'll put a link below as well. And over on the left hand side, you can see we've got a number of tools that we can use. On the right hand side, we've got a number of map interactive tools that we can use. Various zooms, go to home, find my location, etc. Now the first and foremost thing that grabs your eye is the fire danger forecast and we've got a couple of different sources here and we've also got a couple of different x uh, indexes that we can have a look at so i'm just going to leave these on the defaults for the moment and turn on the fire danger forecast for the 27th of june 2019 and there you can see the red areas are higher risk and the green areas lower risk and if we just turn on the legend, there you can see the legend itself. So we go from very low danger to extreme danger. I'll just switch that off and I'm going to wind the date forward to the 29th, a couple of days. And if we turn that back on, we can see how the spread is happening. Let's zoom into Italy as a case study. And there you can see that Quite a lot of Italy there is in extreme danger and currently we have some fires breaking out in northeastern Spain so we can locate these using the burn area locator and first of all I'm going to turn on active fires we've got two sources for this we've got MODIS and we've got VIIRS so let's turn on MODIS and there you can see MODIS comes on and then let's turn on VIRS. And if we look at our legend now, it'll tell us what these symbols mean. For the burnt areas, I'm going to look at the MODIS supervised burnt areas, these, and the fire severity as well. And then if you just hit the burnt area locator, I'm going to select Spain, and I'm going to select the province. And it shows you here where these fires are so let's zoom to our burnt area and this is the area that's currently under threat in spain so hopefully the fire services are managing to battle this and i guess we'll see how this pans out in the next few days but that's a brief overview of how you can use this copernicus emergency management service if you'd like to know more, they've got a really good user guide. You can just click on this up on the right hand side and you can get in the finer details of how to use this very good tool. The other tool I'd like to show you is Global Forest Watch Fires and a very similar setup. As you can see on the left hand side, we have a number of by now familiar looking data points that we can look at. Um, this is slightly more specific in terms of areas that you can look at. Uh, Indonesia features quite heavily in this. The interesting thing about this one to me is that you can actually get an alert service. So you can subscribe to alerts by clicking up here and then you can draw an area or you can drop a zipped shapefile. Now in testing this um, I've found that this alert service isn't currently working. Uh, for some reason, I can't seem to subscribe, but I have been in touch with Global Forest Watch Fires to find out more about this. And I'll just show you quickly how this is supposed to work. So we'll start drawing and we can draw an area that will make us a shapefile. And then we can sign up to receive fire alert emails or SMS messages when fires occur. So if you click on this, you'll be asked to fill in your details. Now, as I said, I can't get this to work at the moment, um, so I have been in touch with Global Forest Watch Fires and I'm hoping for some updates soon. I'll keep you posted in the description. Uh, the other interesting thing about this is that if you're interested in the actual data, if you click the little information uh, buttons here, it will tell you a lot more about that particular data set and you can learn more or download the data. 
It's quite a useful feature there. And hopefully the fire alert emails or SMS messages will be working soon. Now, if you're not at all familiar with GIS, I thought I might show you how we can make that zipped shapefile for a particular area. So here I've started a new project in QGIS 3.6. And the first thing I will do is save as, and I'm gonna navigate to where I'd like to save it, and I will call it tuscanymap.qgz. That's good, I'll save it. I've already got this map saved, so it'll ask me if I want to replace it. Yes, I do. And then in my project and properties, I'm just gonna make sure that my project home is where it should be, which is in C demo global watch forest, global forest watch fire. I'm gonna okay that. And what that does is in our browser window, it just means that our project home is accessible. So we can get to this very easily. Now, as an example, I'm going to use Tuscany, so we could do with the regions of Italy. Finding data can be quite a tricky job, but if you use your favorite search engine, I always find that if you add the search term .shp for shapefile, that usually helps. And here we're at ISTAT, um, so this is Italy's National Institute of Statistics. And I found a region outline. So I'm gonna go for the most recent. I'm gonna choose this CRS. Um, I don't speak Italian, but I'm guessing that that is less detailed. So I'll just go for that one and I'll download the zip. The download will start and I can save it to wherever I'd like. So I'll save that to my project home. With the zip file saved, I'm just going to highlight it and then right click and extract all. And I'll accept the default there and extract it to this particular folder. And if I open this up, we can see that we have got CM province, com and reg. So I'll be looking for regions. I'm gonna guess that this is the right one. And if we go in there, we've got a standard shape file. So I'm just gonna note the location of that and then get back into QGIS. Once in QGIS, I can use the browser and go to my project home. And there you can see that folder that we've unzipped and it's created a new folder. So I can expand that and expand it further. And let's go for reg. And I'll just pick this up and drag it into my layers. And there we have the regions of Italy. Now the region that I'm gonna use for this example is Tuscany. So I'd like to select this region in order to separate it out from the rest of the regions. So I'm gonna to go to the select tool, which is up here and select features by an area or a single click. And then I'll click on Tuscany and that region is now selected. Then what I'm gonna do is go back to my layers panel, right click and I'm gonna export and save for selected features as. This will open up a dialog box. Make sure that you're on Esri shapefile in order to export as a shapefile. And for the file name, I'm just gonna click on the ellipsis and I'm gonna choose this area, but I'll make a new folder and I'll call it Tuscany. Note that save only selected features is checked here and I'm gonna add the save file to the map. So I'll okay that and there's Tuscany. So that's good, we've got Tuscany separated out. Back in Windows Explorer, I can just open up the Tuscany folder and double check that I've got my shapefile there, which I do, which is great. And then I'm just gonna right click it and go to 7-zip and add to Tuscany zip. And this will make a zip file of that shape file, which is right there. So now we've got our area of interest zipped up. We can get back to the global forest watch fires and hopefully upload it. Here we are back in the web app and I've got Windows Explorer opened as well. So I'm just gonna pick up this Tuscany zip that we've just created, drag it across and drop it right on there. You'll notice that it comes up with choose a name field. 
So for the name, I'm going to go with region. And then I'm going to go to fire alert emails or SMS messages. And you can see that it's given it a name of Toscana. I'll put in my email. And I'm going to add my number as well. And then I'll hit subscribe. Now, as I said before, this currently doesn't seem to be working, but I'll give it a shot anyway and see if it does. And that's all. Um, hopefully that's been of some benefit to you. I hope it has. If you do find that this Global Forest Watch fires begins to work, um, please let me know via the comments. That'd be really useful. And if you are in Europe or traveling to Europe, do keep abreast of what's happening um, in terms of fire risk. Uh, there we can see the errors come up again, which is a shame. But again, I'll let you know if, um, if Global Forest Watch fires get back to me with an update on what's happening with that subscription. Thanks for watching. Take care.